We're back with episode four of our FIFA 22 Hamburg career mode, and things have gone better than expected. We're sitting mid table rather than fighting relegation like we anticipated going into the season. But now that we are in the January transfer window and shifting focus to the second half of this season, a big emphasis will go on the Dave Bay Pokal. I think that's our ticket to European qualification if we can win that competition. Squad wise, I think we need to give credit to each and every player in our starting 11 for what they've done so far. I mean, going into the season, I was kind of afraid we'd see the drop straight back down to Bundesliga 2. But as we continue to assert ourselves as one of the Bundesliga's up and coming clubs, we may need to make some upgrades. We do have a medium brand exposure objective of signing one crucial first team player as either a midfielder or a forward. At the same time, we do have Vuskovic who has his contract expiring. He agreed upon a two year loan deal. That is actually a topic that I'd like to hear your input on. Do you think we should renew Vuskovic's contract and make this deal permanent or let him return? turn to his original club and look at other center back options in season three. Today's press conference will serve as a slight update on the series, actually bringing some disappointing news as I was recording some other content for the channel. I accidentally saved over the Hamburg save. Fortunately, I had a backup at the start of this season, so I did have to re-simulate things. The results that you saw in the last episode, unfortunately, aren't going to be replicated, but I did as best as I could to get us back in the same league standing ninth place, also signing the same players like Karios and Arp and letting the same players leave the club. The main differences is that we're going to see a few changes in the league table. Here's the before look and the after look that we're going to have moving forward and kind of the same thing for the goal contribution. Here's the before and here's the after. I do apologize for that and I'm going to take some actions to make sure this sort of thing hopefully will not happen again, but we actually had a few positive things come out of this change, particularly the scouting network in Brazil brought back the best youth academy player that I found so far in FIFA 22 and I want to say the best player in terms of value in general. Jogo Hayes is a Brazilian center attacking midfielder already at an overall of 70. And here's a look at what his statistics and valuation was when I first found him. That overall 61 to 83, so pretty much smack dab in the middle at 70 at a potential of 76 to 94. Again, that valuation of 4 million making him the best player I found. While these Youth Academy players are promising, they're not going to give us that immediate impact to the team. And that is what we need if we want to make the push in the day of Beipo call roughly 17 million to work with and i really like this common suggestion of looking at a mexican player to bring back to the bundesliga over the last few fifas there are some notable talents from mexico javier hernandez and andres guardado spent some time at Bayer leverkusen i feel like they played a big role in l tree squad over the last decade or so and then you've got the likes of carlos salcedo and marco fabian who apparently is no longer in fifa but they used to play over at eintracht frankfurt and although we have that board objective of signing a a crucial midfielder or forward, I feel like Eric Aguirre will be the perfect addition for us at Hamburg for a few reasons. First off, he's such a versatile player, has been for the last few years in career mode. Although he's listed as a left back by default, he is right footed and can play a lot of different positions. Personally, I think he could slot in perfectly as our left center midfielder, kind of playing a box to box role while still offering a strong defensive presence to provide cover for Krause. We do also have to consider that Leibold is one of the older players in our starting 11 so maybe we have a future left back replacement here but anyways we'll go ahead and complete this signing for 12 million really not too much of a fee still saving some funds for future seasons as we will finally mark the transfer of another mexican national team player to the bundesliga also working on that center midfielder development plan slash position change should take the rest of the season to complete despite the few hiccups i've really been enjoying this hamburg save and a lot of credit goes to you all for that the comments and interaction you've been leaving in these videos has been fantastic. Let's try to keep that going in this episode. If you are enjoying the series, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you are new around here. Not too many transfers out of the club for this January transfer window. I feel like that's something we mostly focused on in the summer. Instead, we're going to see some temporary departures with players leaving out on loan. A few of you might be excited to see that Suhonen is finally going to get that loan spell and hopefully see a rise in his rating along with our top quality Youth Academy prospect Dextra and even two other Youth Academy players that have potential to be special in Hayes and Fuchs. With the new season coming up, we'll probably see another promotion in our Youth Academy to get a third and final 
five star five star scout but for now we'll keep our scouting reports in germany for three months looking for any type of player and also establishing a network in denmark looking for a physically strong player this is actually the top nationality with the most former players at hamburg a lot of it coming from the club's past but we'll be looking towards the future for any players that we can find here but with the changes in the save means a new opponent for the quarterfinal of the day of Pepo call of course we've made it in consecutive seasons but we'll need to defeat one of the Bundesliga's top clubs in RB Leipzig if we want to go through. Here's a look at the squad again, sliding in Aguirre at the left center mid position and a slight modification to Krause as well. I saw a comment saying that we should maybe remove the turtleneck from him. I kind of agree. I feel like the short kit sleeves look better as well as an updated boot selection. But as we shift over to the gameplay, I want to let you all know that I have updated sliders for this save as well as any episodes moving forward. I think I reached my breaking point when I was recording some of that other content. Maybe that has something to do with me writing over the Hamburg save due to frustration. But these are the Operation Sports sliders. They seem to update them pretty often. And if we need to make any changes moving forward based on if things get too easy or too difficult, we can always do that in future videos. Leipzig, known for their high pressing play style, will have their work cut out for them. A few departures from the club. Of course, Werner are leaving for Chelsea a few seasons ago, and in this save, no Mukiele at the right mid position. I think we have to be one of the favorites for the Pokal this season. Of course, we got to this stage last year, and now our team is even stronger with the transfers we've made and the upgrades that have happened to some of our players. But starting off the highlights, Vinsheimer setting up Yatza. That's some of the higher shot error, I think, coming into play with the effort going off the post and back to the keeper. Same thing for the opposition. We did a good job closing down the angle with our previous slider settings. I think both of those could have easily resulted in goals. So hopefully allowing for some more realistic gameplay. But a quality finish from Vinsheimer seems to be... The striker in charge, setting up our wingers with chances and even scoring some on his own with that volleyed effort, celebrating in front of the home fans. And that's exactly how we wanted to start this match. Still in the first half as Kampel sets up Sorla, quality save from Hoyer Fernandez. He was one of the better keepers in the poke call. And despite losing his starting role at the beginning of the season, I'm glad he's able to get the occasional appearance. Quality bit of build-up play from Leipzig. Just good passing and movement off the ball. Eventually, it is Haidara to get the ensuing goal to make things level. We'll look to respond before the break. It's Leibold to set up Kitzel. Having been on the same club for a few seasons now, I feel some of that chemistry is building. And as a result, we're able to get the lead. A nice job from Kitzel, utilizing that five-star weak foot, which surprised the keeper so many times. Gulachi did as well as he could to cover the near post, but Kitzel ultimately goes for the far post and is rewarded with the goal. Kitzel now cutting in on his preferred right foot, going with the cross goal effort. Saved well as the match stays 2-1. to one. Now we're looking for some counterattacks. As Leipzig push forward players, it is Yatza. Should have opened up the scoring in the first few minutes. This time he is going to play across to Vinsheimer. Our striker in form will make things 3. And with just 30 or so minutes left to play, this probably will seal the results. We've had some strong defensive performances and I felt like we were the better team on the day as we will look to make some changes. Vinsheimer being brought off for Han. Lots of matches left this season, so we need to rest up. I think a big reason why we were getting so many goal scoring chances was the pressure we applied on Leipzig and some of the higher passing error from both us and the computer led to some turnovers in play. Han should have done better with the chance. He's been so clinical in recent episodes, and I was surprised to see that effort go wide. Krause with the breakaway run has an uh, option in the middle. It is Kitzel, who again has the shot saved. Had it not been for Gulaski. I think we could have easily scored five as Kitzel here is going to be called offside. A good line in the end by Leipzig, despite only having two defenders. Forsberg eventually will find Sorloth and a good save from Fernandez again, knocking that one out of play. Leipzig seemed to show up too late on the day. The later ends of this match definitely went in their favor, but Fernandez making things look simple, this time with the kick save to only allow one goal on the day. There is no doubt that he is going to be our keeper here in the boat call as we look to go on a cup run. We may have already knocked out the most difficult opponent we could have matched. These boat call matches seem pretty spaced out as we are approaching season's end with this semi-final fixture against Wolfsburg, who actually knocked us out of the competition at last season. I think I was mistaken when I said Munchen Gladbach did so in the last episode, but a pretty familiar side for them. I think the player to watch is Thiago Almada, who, by the way, has just made the transfer to Atlanta United in MLS. But we know from our Wolfsburg career mode last year that their keeper Castells 
is also a quality option between the sticks. And it's going to be difficult for us to score goals. So maybe we'll rely on more of a defensive emphasis in this fixture. With that said, when we've got as much space down the wing as we had in this match, we may as well try to get Yatsa the ball. He's going to play the perfect pass to Vinsheimer. Not entirely sure what Castells was doing. I think he was anticipating the cross to get by Vinsheimer, but he just kind of brought that one into space. It was an open goal in the end. And of course, our striker will be finishing those chances more often than not. The pressure from Wolfsburg started to come up, though. And Sands, while he's been great on the ball, will lose hold of possession. Amada playing through one of their players. And Waldschmidt has his effort denied by Fernandez, putting in one of the better performances that I've seen in this match. This was one of my favorite saves because taking a look at the replay, He's actually going to save this one with his head. Doesn't even need to use his gloves. He is just that good. A chance for us to make it too as well. Aguirre playing through Yata. Of course, he's got the pace. Does he have the finish? No, the shot error was just too much for us to handle. As we'll get one more chance before the end of the break. Krause getting by the defenders with ease. Castells making a quality stop on the finesse shot effort. Switching sides now. And Fernandez back to his usual ways of shot stopping as Waldschmidt plays through and Kudu denied from close range as we look to get on the counter. Krause finding Yatza, Vinsheimer making the run. He will be played the pass, has some supporting options with Kitzel and Kitzel with not too much of an angle decides to go with the chip shot. That is a pretty routine save for Castells. Still trying to work the ball down this left-hand side and Kitzel going down the byline, finds Krause in the middle. His positioning is just top-notch, still needs to work on some of his shooting categories. But from that close of a range, you don't need to worry about it too much as that ball was served to him on a silver platter. Couple of changes as we will see the appearance of Kinsombi as a substitute. It's a shame he's no longer a part of our starting 11 considering how good he is in game, but that's exactly what you want as a sub, someone that you know you can rely on but Waldschmidt having his effort denied and even the follow-up going straight back to Fernandez doing his best to maintain the clean sheet here. Vince Heimer bringing the ball down well, but we still end up with a 2-0 result, putting us through to the final of the Pokal and a chance for us to qualify for Europe. Some bad news though, as we inch closer and closer towards the end of the season, Yata has picked up another long-term injury. This is his second one in two years, which means that we'll leave him out for our final Bundesliga match against Schalke 04, just to get an idea of how we can actually play for the Pokal final. By the way, this won't matter too much for our Bundesliga standings. We're going to be finishing 10th. Schalke will finish bottom of the table. And I was thinking about who could be a good right winger replacement. Of course, we've got the likes of Amici as a left footed option on the bench. But for whatever reason, something was leading me towards starting Aguirre out wide. Partly because race is quickly growing in his rating as well by moving Aguirre to a winger role race can fill in at the left center mid position. But again, the Schalke match can be a good chance for us to experiment. We can see how Aguirre plays out wide, and if things don't work out, we can always move him back centrally. But getting into the highlights, it is race getting involved right away, finding Kitzel, who has been involved throughout this episode. Aguirre bringing the ball down, probably should have taken that one first time as the effort was blocked. Vince Heimer holding up the play, finding Krause out wide to Aguirre. He's not going to be denied this time. I think Fairmont got gloves to it, but not enough to keep the effort from going in off of the post and into the back of the net. Nice to see our position change has worked out for the better. With the one no lead, we'll look to expand upon that. Aguirre showcasing some of his pace it is one of his strong suits. Also, some precise dribbling to find Vinsheimer. Quality save from Fairmont to deny that effort, and we'll get into the second half. Probably Schalke's best chance right there. Karios equal to it, though. Haven't seen a whole lot of him from this episode, but he's got the support of most of y'all in the comments, and I'm good moving forward with him as well. What a mistake this is from Fairmont, and I'm not sure if this is sliders coming into play. I've seen a couple of those mistakes from the computer every now and then, but Kitzel ultimately will get the goal off of the rebound, doubling our lead and compiling on Schalke's misery. As soon as we scored that second goal, things just opened up defensively. Vince Heimer, more pace than the Schalke defense, will go with an effort just wide of the post. Not stopping though, Vince Heimer now finding Krause over the top. This would have been a contender for goal of this season. Krause bringing the ball so down so well, uh, but Kitzel, he's going to answer back with what will be goal of this season. This wasn't even a chip shot effort. It was just a first time shot and he places the effort perfectly, finding the goal and giving us a three goal lead. 
Han being brought on for these final minutes. We don't yet need to worry about Han retiring, but within the next few seasons, that is something that we need to consider. I'm hoping that we can see out most of the seasons of this career mode with Han as a rotational striker and not dropping too much in his overall, but he's going to make it four for us. You could say we're taking the club name Schalke Nulfir quite literally as we'll close out our Bundesliga season with a win. It comes down to this, the DFA Pokal final against Borussia Mönchengladbach. And for reference, they finished top seven in the Bundesliga, so they're going to be striving for a victory to qualify for Europe just as much as we are. A formation very similar to that which we played against RB Leipzig. They have made some transfers. Vlahovic at the left forward position. Dries Martin still playing out wide at left mid. It's a unique tactic, but we'll need to be at our very best if we do want to see the victory here. Taking a look at the path to the final for both clubs, Mönchengladbach on the left. They've had a fairly easy route to the final, beating a lot of Bundesliga two clubs. So you could argue that we are the first major opponent that they've had to face. We, on the other hand, have beaten some quality opponents to get here. Some of that has to do with the new gameplay settings, and I think some of that has to do with the new signings. It is our homegrown talent, Krause, though, that opens up the scoring. He knows how to show up on the big stage, and at the Olympia Stadion, he is going to be celebrating in front of, I don't even know how many fans. It has to be one of the biggest stadiums in all of Germany. But we're continuing that pressure here with Aguirre out wide. And again, that pace is so, so good because he'll set up Vinsheimer with a great pass, a few dribbles to get around the Mönchengladbach defenders, and he will make things to just 15 minutes into this match. Not much Sommer could have done about that. We focused a lot of our play down the right side, but it's Kitzel on the left that will set up Vinsheimer and on his preferred right foot. We'll be finessing that effort home to give us our third goal. And judging how gameplay has gone in today's episode and in the second half of season two, I think what I'm going to be doing moving forward is turning down the pass error for the CPU and also the shot error, which should equal out some of the gameplay. I think things were slightly too easy for me. We kind of want the harder legendary difficulty settings, if that makes sense, and maybe even turning things up to ultimate if that time does come. But some great build up play to set up Krause. The chipped over the top through ball led to a perfect volleyed effort. We're slightly after the halftime break and we're in control. Four goals up. I don't think there's any chance that Mönchengladbach will get back into this match, especially after they have a red card offense. We got all the way into the last match of today's episode before we saw it, but that trend is going to continue. It is the new signing Vlahovic that is sent off. A slide tackle from behind is only going to result in one thing. Ironically, Mönchengladbach seemed to play better with 10 men than they did before. Finally getting a shot on target. Hoyer Fernandez equal to it though, continuing his good form in the poke call as we will make a change. Might be the final time that we see Vuskovic in this Hamburg squad. Again, I'm gonna be asking for your opinions in the comments section, whether you think we should keep him at the club, pay that big fee that he's now going to be worth, or whether we should look at other center back options. Immediately following that change, we do concede a goal, but I don't think that's going to be making too much of a difference. Some brief moments of promise from Mönchengladbach, because Mbolo threw on goal, but Hoyer Fernandez, is going to recover on the save, and that will be full time. Four to one is how things end, and that will mark the first bit of silverware here in this Hamburg career mode. We're on a sharp trajectory up through Bundesliga 2, now as one of the mid-table teams in Bundesliga and into Europa League with the win in the day Pepo call. To be fair, this is a competition that has seen a lot of different victors in recent years, and this will mark the fourth time the club has won the German Cup, winning it in 62-63, 75-76, and 86-87. We can now add 22-23 to that list as well. Schoenma will be lifting the cup this time around, but now that we have to start considering tougher opposition in Europa League, and we're now striving to finish in the upper ends of the Bundesliga table. We might rotate club captains so that we can improve in our lineup while keeping the Hamburg culture and mentality intact. But we'll now get into the end of season recap and cover all things about the career mode and what it might look like moving forward. Once we got far enough in the Bundesliga season that we knew we weren't going to get relegated, I feel like the league wasn't a huge emphasis, rather focusing on the DFB poke call. But it is Bayern München that win the league 12 points clear of Leverkusen, Borussia Dortmund, and Wolfsburg rounding out the top four. We will see a 10th place finish, so not quite finishing in the top half of the table, but certainly mid-table. For the relegation zone, it is Freiburg, Köln, and Schalke Nulfir that may potentially see the drop, the latter two definitely seeing the drop down to 
Bundesliga 2. But Freiburg will survive as they defeated Werder Bremen in the promotion playoff final. Dusseldorf and Bochum joining us in the Bundesliga next year. Robert Lewandowski leading the Bundesliga in goals, 23 from 32. But credit to Winsheimer, he had 16 from 32, pretty much a goal from every other match. Versus, it is Thomas Müller leading the way, 12 from 34. Two appearances for us, though, in the top 15 with Winsheimer and Kitzel. And Karius, despite not featuring in every single match, put up a pretty good performance in the league this season. I know he received a bit of criticism from me, in the last episode based off of the maybe bad luck he had or the poor performances depending on how you want to look at it but i am glad to see that he managed to turn things around and put in a respectable initial season back in the bundesliga of course we did win the day of paypal call with a 4-1 victory over munchen gladbach liverpool winning champions league over psg it is via real to win europa league over ajax and finally stad rene with a victory in the Europa Conference League against Everton. I think Vinsheimer's contribution across all competitions is even more impressive. He really outperformed in the Dave Paypo call as he managed 24 goals across 37 appearances in all competitions. Kitzel getting into the double digits and Krause rounding out the top three. Vinsheimer also leading the way for assists with Kitzel and Krause again as the top three players. Although he didn't have the best output in terms of goals and assists, I don't think anybody can downplay Krause's importance to this Hamburg team. I think you can notice it a lot from the gameplay, how involved he is, pushing up from the midfield and getting involved in basically every single attack. He is also the highest valued player in our squad at 66 million, but we'll switch on over to board objectives, completing most of these outside of signing that crucial first team forward or midfielder, but still achieving a 93 manager rating. And I think a few options for us moving forward for the squad selection. Sad to see that Yatza picked up another injury, but he was another player that was significantly important to our performances prior to getting injured. Aguirre might slot in at right winger, could play as that left center mid, or even as a left back. Let me know where you think he plays best, but I wanna thank all channel members for supporting what we do here on YouTube. If you ever wanna learn more about the membership program, click the join button right underneath the video. That's gonna be a wrap for today's Hamburg episode. If you liked it, make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you're new, but until next time, this has been Flick. I'll be talking to you all again soon.